Hi, everybody. We're at Anaheim Stadium for the CIF Division I championship football game between the Fontana Steelers and the San Gorgonio Spartans. This championship weekend marks the end of the 1989 high school football season. But how pleased we were at Simmons Cable TV to bring you 11 exciting weeks of high school football coverage. And tonight, we'll take a look back at this past season. Hi, I'm Willie Padilla, and welcome to our 1989 high school football wrap-up show. The first half of a football season, very much like the first half of a football game, is filled with finding strengths and weaknesses, both the oppositions and your own. We find out a lot about the Long Beach Area High School football teams from the coaches and the action down on the field during our pre-league coverage. It all began with a week one meeting between the Servite Friars and the Wilson Bruins. And Coach John Brennan of Wilson had a good idea of what to expect in the upcoming season. Well, we have several seniors, but we're inexperienced. We've got a lot of size, and uh, we're certainly going to be tested right away against the Servite Friars, and we're all excited and nervous, and no one can uh, be more excited than the Bruins. I'll tell you, we're ready to go. But on this night, the game would be controlled by the Friars, as fullback Billy Ray would score two touchdowns to lead Servite to a 21 to nothing season-opening victory over Wilson. While most teams already had a game under their belts, week two marked the season opener for both Banning and Pauley High Schools. And Jackrabbit co-coach Jerry Jaso knew that this game would be a good test. Yeah, it's a little bit too early in the season, John, for Banning, but uh, I can't blame anybody but myself because I scheduled the game, you know what I mean? So we're here, we've had three weeks to prepare for it, and we're really excited about this game. It's, you know, it's always a great one to play Banning. And Pauley wasted no time in getting on the scoreboard. Garcia kicks it off and we're underway as Green gets it at about the 12. Green breaks it. He has room. He may go all the way. There goes Andre Green. Long Beach Pauly's going to get on the scoreboard on the opening kickoff. Touchdown, Jack Rabbits. Pauly would eventually lead 9-0 before Banning would get on track. He gets it into Davis's hands. Davis gets some room. He breaks a tackle. He might go all the way. He probably will. There goes Davis all the way for Banning. Touchdown, Pilots. The Pilots would score again to make it 14-9 at halftime and would eventually put the game away late in the fourth quarter on John Maia's 17-yard touchdown run. Final, Banning 21, Pauley 9. In week three, an undefeated Milliken team faced Redondo High School in a game Ram coach Dave Radford joked would be an aerial circus. Oh, uh, I don't know. We try to put the spiral in our playbook, and we'll take a look at it tonight. But it was the ground game, led by Lincoln Starks, who had scored two touchdowns, that led the Rams to a 21-10 victory over Redondo. Week four brought us to St. Anthony for homecoming and a meeting with St. Genevieve in a big game for Ralph Godfrey's Saints. And we have a lot of young kids, uh, juniors and sophomores, uh, starting out there. First time playing varsity ball. It's, they're going in their uh, fourth game now. And uh, I think we're going to see what some of them really made of tonight. And St. Anthony responded, led by Dave Carrillo's 108 yards rushing and two touchdowns, as the Saints rolled past St. Genevieve 27-3. The final week of pre-league action for more league teams took us to Jordan High School, where the Panthers faced the highly ranked Bishop Amat Lancers in a tough assignment for Jordan coach Mike Ono's squad. Yeah, we're, we're, we're excited about playing Bishop Amat. You know, we're up for the game also. Uh, we're going to start a sophomore quarterback like we talked about last night on your show, and, and he's excited to be here. We're excited. You know, we showed up. They showed up. It'll be a fun game. Unfortunately for the Panthers, Bishop Amat rolled to a 31-7 victory, keeping Jordan winless in pre-league games for the second straight year. We've reached halftime of the CIF Division I championship football game with Fontana leading San Gorgonio by a score of 14-7. We've also reached the halfway point of our look back at the 1989 high school football season. And when we return, we'll take a look at the Long Beach area campuses and the Morley campaign. 
People who deal in drugs ride in expensive cars. The same can be said about people who use drugs. If you or someone you know has a drug problem, call Habilitat before you get the ride of your life. The pageantry that accompanies high school athletics is powerful, but not nearly as powerful as the education the students receive at our Long Beach area schools. That's why at halftime of each of our games of the week, we took a look at the campuses of our Long Beach area schools. was founded in 1933 by David Starr Jordan, a medical doctor and noted zoology expert who was also the first president of Stanford University. Millican High School. Established in 1956, Millican High now has 3,200 students and has graduated over 26,000. Before the 1895 earthquake and rebuilt on its present site in 1911, Poly High is California's oldest school and holds more CIF championships than any other high school in the state. St. Anthony High School, a Catholic co-educational high school operated and supported by St. Anthony Parish, was founded in 1920 by the Immaculate Heart Sisters. This is Wilson High School. Established in 1926, this beautiful school, located in East Long Beach, is bordered by 7th Street, 10th Street, Park Avenue, and Eximino. The pageantry and excitement of halftime is now over. Time to get back to football, as was the case when Pauly met Wilson in week one of the Moore League campaign. The Jackrabbits entered the league opener with a 3-1 pre-league mark and were coming off a 42-0 win over Fountain Valley. And Polly continued to roll with this 32 to nothing win over the Bruin. That left the standings combined with Milliken's win over Jordan and Lakewood's victory over Compton looking like this out of the gate. The Polly defense was the story in week two of league play as the Jackrabbits sacked Jordan quarterback Ted Ramirez eight times and picked off two of his passes, including this one returned for a touchdown by Roderick Matthews. Final Poly 21, Jordan 10. The victory kept Poly atop the league standings, along with Lakewood, a winner over Milliken. Wilson moved to 500 with a one-point win over Compton. Week three of league play brought Poly and Milliken together for a big game for both schools. And the Jackrabbits were able to overcome a 6-0 halftime deficit to beat the Rams by a final score of 14 to 6. The win, combined with Wilson's important victory over Lakewood, left Pauley alone atop the league standings, while Milliken suffered a major blow to its playoff hopes. Jordan, meanwhile, picked up win number one of the year over Compton. A week four showdown between Milliken and Wilson had playoff implications for both schools. And it was the Bruins who took advantage as Mike Stewart's 20-yard touchdown run in the first quarter and Ben Polk's one-yard touchdown plunge in the third propelled Wilson to a 17-0 shutout over the Rams. With the wins, Wilson secured a playoff spot, as did Lakewood with its win over Jordan. And Pauley, with its victory over Compton, secured at least a share of the Moore League crown. The fifth and final week of the Moore League season featured a championship showdown between the 4-0 Jackrabbits and the second place 3-1 Lakewood Lancers. But a couple of short runs were all it took as Pauley beat Lakewood 14-0. The win gave Pauley the outright Moore League title while Lakewood dropped to third. Wilson sewed up second with a victory over Jordan and Milliken dropped Compton. 
After 10 weeks of exciting high school football, Division I was pared down to 16 teams, with the Long Beach Poly Jackrabbits being number two amongst them. And the Jackrabbits had a first round meeting with St. Paul. And like most of the regular season, Pauly had to play most of this game without number one signal caller, Chris Tupuola. And as he did all year, Russell Orso steered the Jackrabbits to victory, scoring three touchdowns. Final, Pauly 32, St. Paul 7. Other first round scores had Wilson over Alamany 35-14 and Lakewood losing to Loyola 35-7. The second round, however, was not as kind to local teams, as Pauly was upset by one of the Division I finalists, San Gorgonio, and Wilson fell to the other Division I finalist, Fontana. As the time winds down in this Division I championship final, with Fontana leading San Gorgonio 35 to 7, so too does our 1989 high school football wrap-up show. But what look back would be complete without the plays of the year. In motion goes Jones. Again, Orso back to pass. Under a heavy rush, gets it off for Jones. It's complete. Jones to the 30, the 20, the 10. See you later. Touchdown. Two seconds left. The pass. It's the hit. It'll go for a touchdown. Unbelievable. The Panthers will go for a field goal attempt. Steve Falatea will do the honors. Michael Tison to hold. The snap, a high one. Tison gets it down. The kick is good. Credit that one to Michael Tison, able to grab the football. Clock down to five seconds. They go back to pass. Heavy rush is a screen to Borden. Borden into the open field. Cuts back. Has some more yardage. Right up the middle. Andre Borden's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Milligan to end the first half. Well, a look back at the 1989 high school football season, like this Division I championship won by Fontana, is now over. And like the teams we showcased on our game of the week, we hope to come back even better next year. I'm Willie Padilla. Thanks a lot for joining us on the 1989 high school football wrap-up show.